So I'm on my way to the airport, and this is going to be a fun flight, something new, something I haven't done before. A uh, photographer reached out to me, he's from LA, and uh, I guess he takes photographs of mineral and salt deposits and wanted to fly around the Great Salt Lake, take some photos, so we're heading up there to check it out. So come along, this will be fun. flying out there let's do some vlogging all right so sounds good to me beautiful day out Pick, you chose a good one so I should, out. yeah yeah i should probably introduce today's guest this is james portion but james calls me a couple weeks ago it was about two weeks ago yeah you're from la and he said hey man you fly me around to take some photos I'm like, hey man, any excuse yeah, to go flying? That's how I remember it. Is that how you remember it? I think that was pretty accurate, and I was quite grateful <laughs> for that. <laughs> so you told me a little bit on the phone. In fact, I looked up some of your pictures after you said. So you take photographs of like mineral deposits and kind of like geographical features in that sense. Natural areas of the world, or areas that uh, produce extreme abstractions. Uh, yeah, that's Utah. Utah's got a lot of that. Have you done anything down in like southern Utah with all the geographical stuff down there? I've only done that on the land. I haven't done that really in the area. Yeah, from the air, yeah. There's some. I've flown over some of those areas, Zions and Bryce Canyon and Dinosaur Land, something it's called. And man, it's just like arches. They're all arches. Yeah, they're, they're stunning cool. areas for sure. And and the one thing I noticed, because like we've we've gone through Bryce and Zions and hiked it and stuff, but you just don't get the magnitude of it until you're up in the air and see like how the vastness of it that it spans November, seven tree, relative nine, to everything nine, else that's around you, you know? Left, right down one for tree five. Hope you touch goes. Yeah, the aerial perspective is definitely an addiction. So is this something that you do professionally? Is this a hobby? No, I uh, actually do this professionally. Somehow people buy my work. Oh, that's very, very cool. Oh, uh, very, very grateful. Yes, I started going up. My first one was through Death Valley. Oh, really? And uh, after that, there was no going back for me. So, so I was going to ask you, like, why? What drew that you to good. that discipline yeah. of photography? You know, why did you want to see that stuff? Uh, you know, a lot of it, it was ten years of really trying to discover a unique voice. The work and uh, something that always was important to me in life was nature, and uh, that kind of then became an impetus or a theme that I could focus on. And from there, it was just refining a style so that I had my own authorship. Yeah, what I do, you know. So let me ask you this, and don't be shy. Are you kind of a big deal? Like, like should, I, should I be humbled Romeo in your presence? Right Huge deal. Like <laughs> I'm not sure any photographer is a big deal. <laughs> That's but okay, it's good. a fun uh, job. I'm a pretty great pilot too, so you're you're in good company. You know, we're both masters of our trade. I like hearing that. <laughs> no, that was something. As soon as I called you, you know, so much of what I do with the travels in the world and going up in planes with people I just met, you yeah. really have to follow your intuition. Yeah. You can look at all the everything, you know, but at the end of the day, it's that what defines you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned that, that you kind of got Parker, you're you're paraphrase it, but you kind of got to get this vibe about, because, you know, I guess you're putting a lot of trust in someone Parker, that, traffic, traffic, they know what they're doing you know, and can allow you to do what it is you need to do. So what, uh, so you've done some traveling then? I've been to six continents. Wait. So, yeah, I've done a fair amount. 
What's the coolest place you've been to so far? Uh, that is always the loaded question. <laughs> Uh, it's fun doing surreal places. Africa's pretty uh, intense a lot of places. Ethiopia's got the lowest place on earth. Oh really? Fascinating as anything to see. So, uh, what we're going to do is... Number 650 radar contact a mile northwest of the Ogden VOR. Well, obviously, Salt Lake City's got a, a great Salt Lake here, and it's you know mineral rich and has all sorts of interesting uh, features and that. So you said one of the things you wanted to go do is like look at the uh, evaporative ponds and kind of take some pictures of the contrasting minerals. You, you said you wanted something that was just super high contrast. Exactly. Yeah. That's perfect. Yep. We'll do uh, the high contrast stuff that's not as colorful. We'll shoot with this rusty little Leica that's been everywhere in the world with me. And old school film. We'll make some real beautiful black and white blow ups with that. Like real film. Yeah. And then uh, for the color work, we're going to be playing with this new Fuji uh, medium format camera. Oh. Uh, we are going to see how well this thing works. Very cool. So, you know, you'll probably get a better sense when we get out there, but, you know, you have to let me know if you want to be higher or lower. I don't know. Uh, I mean, you've done it in the past. Is it easier to go really, really high and kind of zoom in on the areas that you want? Uh, or do you want to be down low? or? I tend to like to be a little low. This is actually a pretty perfect height. Okay. Where we're at. And where are we at now? We're at uh, about 5,700 feet. That's not off the ground. That's off, off the air. You know, we're only about 1,000. Yeah, you okay, yeah, that's, here. <laughs> I was going to say, usually most of the color work that I've shot in Based Owens Lane cancellation received contact hill tower mud flat. Uh, was all shot at a thousand feet, but okay. we're talking about Death Valley yeah. too, which is pretty close to sea level, so. Oh, very cool. We'll go out there and check it out. So James, are you going to be able to shoot through that window okay, or? Uh, if I can open it when we get a little more in position, if that's okay. cool. Yeah, um, so the only thing about that is we got to slow our airspeed down before you open that window. That's fine. So Once we start to look and find what's really perfect. Yeah, yeah. so don't just fly it open. Let's make sure we're coordinating there. Understandable. A lot of, a lot of air ball passes. Right now we're probably doing uh, 117 knots. We're, it doesn't look like it, but we're doing about 130 miles an hour. That's a lot of wind when you open up your window. Makes sense, brother. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. There's some uh, you know airspace that we got to work around because off to our East here, you got Hill Air Force Base and Ogden, and they're both uh, Class D airspace, which unless you got authorization, you can't go into it, so we got to avoid them. And then, uh, you know, Salt Lake International Airport's just in the south of us, and they got it's called the Class Bravo airspace that's, again, protected, so. All right. Number six, five, Already, zero, what, what I'm there. seeing is very nice. All right, Roger, six, yeah, five, zero. Oh. We're going to go ahead and descend to five, five anyway, so we can get a little better yeah, pictures. The, this lake stuff's looking six, pretty five, good. Zero, Roger, uh, how much yeah, are you so, going to go? You know, if you just see something you want to uh, swing around, just, just okay, speak up. You know, where uh, I'm taking you is uh, just right above us here. Here's the uh, evaporating we'll east of Okay, yeah, that's, let's start there. Roger. Then we'll go from there. Yeah, it's like approach, Skylane 5292 November. Skylane 5292 November, so like approach. We're about uh, six miles west of the Ogden VOR, 5,500 maneuvering. Sounds like you got some traffic in this area. Just want to check in with you. November, uh, 9 or 2 November, squad 0335. 0335, 9 2 November. November, uh, 650, remain outside Ogden Delta. Roger, 650, remain outside Ogden Delta. November, 9 or 2 November, radar contact, six miles west of the Ogden VOR, Ogden altimeter, 3011, say altitude. 3011 altitude, 5,519 November. Roger. November 650, traffic a half mile east of the uh, Ogden VOR, altitude indicates 5,500. Uh, 650, looking for traffic. Now this is stuff is absolutely perfect. I know, it's kind of crazy so, stuff. You got me looking at you, it man. now. And flight 1062, yeah. flighting 140. I mean, this, this just made that 10 hour drive completely. <laughs> Up. That's a long drive, too, coming through the desert there in the Nevada. Uh, we turned back in. Is that the okay. way yeah. that came up through I-80? Oh, I yeah. didn't mean for you it's to turn down to the track. Yeah, you can not head in. Roger that. Yeah, it looks like maybe we can do another fly around with that stuff. Want to go back? Yeah, that looks like a pretty strong area. Let's do one more fly around there before we move on. Yeah, for sure. 
But this stuff is pure gold. <laughs> Good. Marine Tango Alpha, contact approach 120.9. Especially when we see this stuff blown up 60 by 90 inches. Yeah. It'll be Tango uh, Niner, Niner 8, Tango Alpha, contact kind of approach 120.9. 20.9 for Tango Niner 8, Tango Alpha. Seminole 8 Whiskey Charlie, contact approach 120.9. 120.9 or 8 Whiskey Charlie, thanks for today. No problem. Yeah, it's noisy airspace up here. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of a busy area, a lot going on, a lot of busy airspace right, right around in this area. I'm going to come back and kind of go back to the same line that we made. Yeah, yeah. There's some really weird stuff on my side that I don't think you can see. Like, all this looks cracked up and like you can see through it, you know? You, you have a strong understanding of what I'm going for, so... Hey, I was the yearbook photographer in high school, man. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool, brother. Kevin Brain 6 Bravo Affirmative and flying 170. Oh, man, I really appreciate uh, you flying me out here and doing this. This is yeah. too fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always looking for an excuse to fly, so... I like that to it. Yeah. Yeah, halo bacteria is just such a fascinating thing. That one does all this. I don't, you know, understand the mechanism behind it all, but it's what. Yeah, it lives in the salt and it, it gains its uh, synthesis proteins through uh, photosynthesis, and the sun helps create this. That's what gives it, it its color. Thanks for the help. Yeah. One six five now. It was actually I stumbled upon it originally, and then once once I did, I kind of got completely addicted. <laughs> yeah, it's like another world. And, and the thing is, is you can't see it from the ground, you know, because you can come out here and hike around, but you can't see like that underwater structure that we just flew uh, over from the ground. You know, you got to be above it. Very, very true. To see, and there's just a ton of personality right below the water because the water's so shallow. Nice. How do you know when you've hit it big as a photographer? Big as in. Like you get a gallery that's oh, uh, you know, uh, showing your stuff and your stuff only, is that the benchmark? Uh, I would say that or like a blue chip gallery or a museum. I mean, it took about 10 years to get to that point, but uh, now that's happening. I'm going the ride for as long as I can. So what would a uh, like a typical piece go for, would you say? Uh, if it's a 40 by 60, which is an average size for me, it's about uh, 5,000. Oh, wow. Let's go over to where the area was a little more green. Yeah. I got a lot of this red, and right now, green is one of the hottest colors. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Speaking of hot, a couple of weeks ago, my kids and I went to the uh, Salt Lake City Arts Festival. Oh, yeah? And they were kind of in, like, wonderment about the the uh, prices of pieces like it was kind of interesting so we'd look at a couple different things like this one was fifty dollars then they would see something over here that was like twenty four hundred dollars and they were like so much more interested and fascinated than the expensive piece because you know when you're that age the price equals greatness right i'm not sure when you're that age is the scary part <laughs> how much photoshop do you use uh next to none you keep it on natural as much as you can. Yeah, that's kind of a big reason I, I search so hard to find places like this. Yeah.
says. So I just want to make sure you're a real pilot. I mean, come on, man. Obviously, you can't see the glasses. 